Hi, this is Melissa with Blockchain WTF, and today we'll be talking about how the blockchain will affect the energy sector. The global electricity market is estimated to be worth about $2 trillion and is primarily monopolized by a few corporations. These monopolies and oligopolies lack transparency and lack competition, and this affects prices and consumer trust. The grip these monopolies have is weakening more and more as more people are generating their own solar and wind energy. Obviously, all climates don't allow for this, but a lot of people are switching over. Smart grids allow for prosumers. They are energy producers that also consume a little bit of their energy. And then they sell any excess they have to other people. The blockchain is helping move this forward by allowing all transactions to be securely stored on a distributed ledger and executed with smart contracts. Consumers will be able to scan through blockchain listings and find the best and closest deals. This would be more of a reality for someone who lives in Arizona and has a neighbor with a solar panel versus somebody in Portland, but it's an exciting step forward. Solar energy isn't a perfect solution to living totally off the grid. I watched a few testimony videos of people that live 100% with solar power energy and they have to turn off appliances like air conditioners to flush their toilets. But still, solar panels can be a great addition to people wanting to reduce their energy costs while still being able to use ComEd or whatever your local energy provider is as a backup if there's a cloudy day or a cloudy week where they live. Another impressive feature of using the blockchain to keep track of energy usage is consumer transparency. Imagine buying a house or renting an apartment and being able to look at previous utility bills and not just trust the seller's estimates. Although utilities vary based on usage, this could still help people budget and see if you know the building might need new windows or better insulation. Under the current system, anyone that has excess wind or solar power can sell it back to the electric company However, the seller loses a lot of the energy in the process of transporting it back to a central place that is held until it's sold to somebody else. PowerLedger is a P2P energy platform that allows consumers with solar panels to sell excess energy to their neighbors. Kind of like Tinder for solar energy. They pre-purchase their energy and then smart contracts facilitate the rest of the trading for the excess energy. This P2P trading platform allows customers more control over the price and instant bill settlement instead of waiting 60 days selling back your energy to a traditional energy company. Their ecosystem uses two tokens, Power and Sparks. Power are ERC20 tokens that you would buy on an exchange, while Sparks is used only within the platform and is generated when Power gets entered into a smart contract escrow. Rather than being a large corporation reaping the benefits, the success of the platform flows down to the users and the early supporters. Anyone looking to use the Power Ledger platform will need to have smart meters fitted into their homes, and the data from these will be fed into the blockchain to ensure payments are directed appropriately based on electricity production and usage readings. The benefits of microgrids are that they can be used as an emergency backup in situations where there are issues with the main grid. Natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, and hurricanes can cause service disruptions and affect centralized grid infrastructure. In such an event, microgrids can actually sustain the community until the main grid is back online. Other platforms in the space offering similar buyback models with the blockchain are SunContract, Energy with an I, EnergyCoin, PowerPeers, LO3, SolarCoin, SoloEnergy, Switch, WePower, and Grid Singularity. CryptoSlate has a great resource that breaks down 22 different energy cryptocurrencies. Event Horizon is an annual blockchain energy summit with 80 plus energy and blockchain leaders in attendance. People are really starting to see the benefits of the blockchain and smart contracts in these industries specifically. Although work is underway to overcome the challenges, the fact remains that today's blockchains are costly, slow, and don't scale that well yet. Partnerships with IOTA are being tested with Volkswagen and Engel, an energy company, to test capability to handle scaling. IOTA is being looked at because of its design as a platform for being the Internet of Things. Although these platforms don't reduce the amount of energy miners use on proof of work, confirmations, execution of smart contracts, or the mining of tokens, it does allow miners to at least buy green energy off of their neighbors or get their own panels installed. Being able to choose green resources over the alternative helps reduce the carbon footprint that cryptocurrencies are leaving, which is a huge objection for many people to them becoming a mainstream form of currency. Big crypto mining farms in Japan see renewable energy as the only way to stay profitable with the ups and down swings of the market. 
Energy costs being high almost forces miners into doing the right thing since it's the most profitable route. I also think it's important to have miners connected to renewable energy in case of natural disasters or instance of government censorship of the internet. Uh, then you can keep your grid running because the sun doesn't turn off. A really recent example is Google's proposed Project Dragonfly, where Google's testimony in a Senate hearing was contradicted by leaked documents revealing that the company is indeed making an app to increase the censoring of its communist citizens. <laughs> Even though this is a far-fetched concern for some people in the US, others see this as a not-so-distant future where the government or an EMP attack could threaten the internet. An interesting thing about solar energy is that they do withstand EMP, or electromagnetic pulses, reasonably well. If they're plugged into main energy sources, they will still be affected because of the connected wires acting like antennas. And there's much debate about what would or would not be taken out in one of these EMP attacks because a large enough test has never been done. Studies conducted by the Soviet Union and the US during the Cold War had varying results. Something that isn't so exciting is Walmart has won a patent for the development of the electrical grid that will be powered by Bitcoin and other digital currencies. Bitcoin and other blockchain technology that power cryptocurrencies were created from Austrian economics and open source code. These mindsets are about sharing knowledge, giving true freedom to people, not restricting it. Patents, copyrights are all scarcity mindset based tools that are old way of thinking corporations are bringing into this new way of thinking. They're old wineskins holding new wine, and that ruins the new wine. One of the problems with cryptocurrencies and blockchain projects gaining publicity and adaptation is that all these old world giants are coming in and corrupting the space with the same issues that ruined the last system that they're leaving. That being said, the innovation in the space is still very encouraging, offering people cleaner energy, more autonomy, and more options when structuring deals revolving around solving issues of energy transport. Until recently, the only options were equity and debt instruments. Equity capital has been raised for operational working capital, and debt has been for project development. If the company needs to restructure to make both types of investors happy, they've had to resort to Chapter 11 bankruptcy. <laughs> Security tokens offer true cross-optimization between the needs of investors and the company. Know of any exciting projects in the space? Throw it down in the comments, hit like, subscribe, and the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.